we are getting ready to host uh, the New York Roadshow for India FinTech Festival. Tremendous excitement here. We have almost 200 uh, people who have registered to attend the event. I just hope we don't have to turn people away. Uh, we have a fantastic lineup of speakers. We have folks from the World Bank, FinTech VCs, veteran founders of the New York ecosystem right here. And uh, the energy in the room, I can just feel it. Uh, we have startup founders, uh, we have investors, we have investment bankers, uh, we have people from the ecosystem who are basically allowing all of these things to come together, system integrators, uh, consultants, the whole fintech ecosystem is New York, has come together for the roadshow here. Very excited to be here this evening at the New York Roadshow for India Fintech Festival. I believe that this current decade that's just starting now will be the decade where fintech in India becomes something that is an economic story that the world notices and that companies and technology and business models that are coming out of India at this moment will have global relevance. EMBC is an early stage venture capital fund investing pre-seed to Series A. We invest in the best emerging markets fintech globally that is scaling domestically and has applications globally, and we believe that is squarely in India. So over the course of this year, we and many years to come, we plan to continue to invest in India. We already from this fund have eight portfolio companies and will continue to invest and support founders in India building fintech that is truly transformational, not just copycats from around the world, but building leapfrog innovation that can change lives of their users, both consumers and small businesses. It is exceptional how much support there is for fintech from the government of India. And the India Fintech Festival happening in Mumbai is a perfect example of the whole ecosystem coming together to galvanize support for founders, uh, investors, community, nonprofits, etc. And I think this event in New York is really special because it's an entire ecosystem of folks that invest in New York City, across America, here to learn about what's happening in India. And those of us that live and breathe the excitement of India FinTech can share a little bit uh, about the technology and fast-paced innovation that's happening there. So as, as part of the World Bank, we work in like a number of countries around the world. So globally, a number of countries, from sort of much smaller countries to larger countries. But it's very, um, it's not that often that we see a country as big as India. And there's probably three reasons I'd probably say why we think India and fintech is growing so fast. One is the scale. Uh, it's probably going to reach over 500 billion USD in payments by 2020. Second is the infrastructure. So from the 4G, 5G to the Aadhaar and the UPI and the, and, the, and the payments rails and the India stack, the, the number of different layers and how people can connect onto it. And third is the regulator. I think the regulator particularly is really important and has created and is trying to create much more of an enabling environment for fintech. And I'd say for those three reasons, I think India is going to be um, spiraling forward in the next 10 years and this is a, a great place and a great showcase to be involved. There, there is an amazing opportunity today. Uh, if you look from a global perspective, uh, there's a 10 trillion deficit in uh, the ability for working capital, uh, particularly for the SME sector. If you bre break that down for India, that represents uh, a, a rupees 26 trillion or a 350 billion opportunity today, uh, which is going untapped. Uh, and uh, of that, maybe 30% uh, of that market goes to shadow banking today, uh, which is borrowing at anywhere from 18 to 37%. Uh, so there's a great opportunity uh, to bring uh, a very large part of this uh, sector uh, into the formal uh, in, into the formal borrowing area uh, through both banks, NBFCs, and fintech plays. Uh, I think the the, the whole uh, securitized and syndicated lending play, particularly for corporates is an absolutely greenfield opportunity in India. For example, there's no trade securitization, uh, and uh, we're working on uh, creating the first opportunity to do that. Uh, so from a Talix perspective, we're really focused on what we call deep tier finance, uh, to use liquidity that's trapped in the ecosystem uh, to enable tier two, three, and four uh, companies to actually avail of uh, finance at the credit risk of the buyer. That is, in its essence, is what we're going after. At the end of the day, uh, uh, we're, we're getting to a point of maturity 
uh, in that these fintech ecosystems uh, require an interplay of resources uh, from digital identification to digital onboarding to more efficient payment systems to settlement, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, to me, it's, it's much more about creating uh, the uh, milieu for collaboration uh, so that you can get to market faster and, and win faster rather than trying to invent, invent everything yourself. So I think these kind of events uh, help to uh, create that opportunity both between companies but also from a funding perspective uh, to look at where the real opportunity lies and to be able to unlock some of those opportunities. I think if you look at FinTech uh, and India goes synonymous um, in terms of the reach, uh, look, at the, look at the kind of people we have and the kind of underbank and the number of people uh, available, uh, making sure that uh, everybody has at least a bank account was the biggest achievement what, uh, what has happened in India and with the digital payments and uh, the ability for people to you know uh, transfer and uh, you know uh, money between themselves and to the financial institution uh, digitally that's a big thing I think uh, it has uh, unveiled a variety of a whole bunch of opportunities for uh, India and uh, people who are uh, involved in that actually.